Hey everybody, I'm back. I know I haven't done a Photoshop tutorial in quite a while. Been working on some projects, some amazing stuff. Uh, this one, it's top secret. I can't tell you too much about it yet, but it's set in uh, Prohibition era, East Coast, New York, Chicago, Washington DC. It's full of gangsters. And then I know I'm going to do a trailer for it pretty soon, so I figured I'd show you how it's done. So I'm taking one of the files and I'm selecting this panel specifically because I know I'm going to show it on YouTube. And if you're going to show it on YouTube, you're definitely going to have to have this aspect ratio. It's very difficult to animate panels that are uh, horizontal. So I'm picking a vertical panel, uh, making sure it's in RGB because my color has sent it to me in CMYK. And uh, now we're ready to go. Now, the thing is, you're probably thinking that I'm going to talk a lot about the animation uh, tools here in Photoshop and about the timelines and stuff like that. I'm really not because actually, first of all, I learned how to do the animation from tutorials just like this one, which is why I'm doing a couple for you now and I got to give back to love. But um, the really difficult thing about these animations is figuring out what you're going to animate and then uh, working on the panel so that you can actually animate it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm cutting out the trolley. And like I said, it's the thought process uh, that's really difficult. So you gotta figure out what you're gonna animate. And I'm gonna use, I'm using the pen tool right now and I'm cutting out the trolley because I figured, all right, that's something I'm gonna animate. Maybe that's the first thing I'm gonna animate. So I'm cutting that out. Um, and what you see is when you cut the trolley out, you only have half a trolley and that's not all that good. You need a whole trolley. So uh, the the challenge with this panel is that I've got to build a trolley um, from half a trolley and then I've got to plug in that hole. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm repairing the trolley. And so I've flipped it over. I've, I've got half of it, flipped it over and squeezing it together and trying to make a trolley out of half a trolley. Uh, so as I rebuild things in panels like this, because I, I do this quite often, the key thing is to make sure that I'm using elements that are already in the image. So to fix that door, I'm just using another door uh, and just sliding it over. So I'm not going to make, and I'm not going to try to repair that door from scratch if I don't have to. I'm just going to use a door that is already whole and just copy it. Uh, I'm going to repair the seam here so you can't tell that I glued two trolleys together. Um, and since I flipped it, everything is a mirror image and I don't want a mirror image. So I'm going to take that grate, uh, copy it, move it over. And then I do a lot of masking in uh, all, my, all my work. And so I use a mask and a brush and uh, I clean that up. Um, I cut out one of the windows and slid it over so all the windows now look exactly the same and now you see where the car was the the car roof and the car uh headlight took big chunks out of this trolley and i've got to rebuild it and so what i do is i do my best to use uh elements that exist when i can't like here uh i just take the dropper tool and i select colors and I fill in the blanks with uh, with colors that are in the scene. So uh, I kind of do got to do a little improv. Um, you know, my artist is really talented, and uh, I got to respect my artist and make sure that what I'm creating looks similar to what he would have drawn. So um, what I'm doing is just adding different bands and trying to connect these two halves of the trolley together. Um, a little bit of experimenting going on here because I'm not exactly sure how it's going to turn out. But another thing that I got to point out right now is that the trolley is going to be moving and it's going to be behind a couple cars. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It just, you know, has to work. Um, now I'm going to go up to the roof of the trolley and grab some, some elements that are there. And I'm going to cut them from there, drag them down and... Um, and put them at the bottom and try to make a serviceable trolley. Now, 
some somebody posted in the comments, why don't you just get your artist to draw the background and the foreground and send it to you? Um, because that's gonna be twice as much work, and then you're gonna have to pay your artist double, and that's the that's really the easy answer. Um, if you know you're gonna do a full blown motion comic, then yes, definitely uh, have the artist do the foreground and the background separately. Uh, do all the animated elements separately. So you've got to tell them what's going to be animated and then they're going to do that separately. Uh, but keep in mind that you're going to pay for that. That's that's not free. So, um, so yeah. The other thing is that for this comic, uh, my artist is drawing on paper. And so my previous project was, was done all digitally. But um, my artist for this, Mark... Uh, who's in Spain, he's a Spanish guy, he draws on paper. This is like a, a pulp type of comic. Uh, it's got a genuine pulp feel. He pulls out his brushes and pens and pencils and rulers and does this whole thing by hand. So now my trolley's done, right? But what you see is that there's a huge hole in my panel and you've got to fill it up. So when I when I do these kinds of repairs, my motto is just to go big. I don't try to do small repairs. I try to grab big, big chunks, uh, flip them over and fill in the holes because the, if the chunk is bigger, then uh, it's actually less noticeable. So what I do is I use a mask and, uh, and I mask the parts together so that they blend seamlessly. Now I take those boxes and I just copy them really quickly. Uh, I don't use the pen tool for this kind of stuff. When I do these animations, I try to do them really fast and really dirty. And uh, I don't use the pen tool. Um, I just uh, I just go around it with the uh, the marquee tool. So I've uh, I've grabbed some extra background elements, um, flipped them over backwards enlarged them and stuck them on the other side that's like my go-to that's my mo right there um you know grab something flip horizontal and uh and patch in the hole with it so now i'm going to try to make it so those cars are in the in the background there and i stretch them a little bit to fill up the hole you know i mean i'm gotta admit like you're doing this really fast and dirty and so uh it's it's not always pretty if you need to stretch something or whatever just do it so I'm trying to patch in that piece of ground, that, that uh, piece of road with some other road. Uh, again, I am uh, I'm masking and using a soft brush to blend it. Um, <coughs> now, there's a point where you just you just can't uh, you can't use chunks of other parts of your panel anymore. And at that point, you just you grab your brush, you just grab your paintbrush and use the the dropper tool, and select the color that's nearby, and you just you just draw, because um, this is going to be a panel that's on you know on, in your video for just a second or two. Uh, you I always use the Ken Burns effect and and zoom, and things are going to be moving, and so people aren't going to notice, and so uh, yeah, just grab a brush. And draw and and fill it in. Um, so now I've got uh, the hole patched, which is very important. Gonna add a little bit of film grain there, uh, a little bit of noise there. Not film grain, a little bit of noise. Uh, sometimes when you use the brush, it's just it's too clean and too smooth. And um, so now the big issue is that I've got to make this trolley move, but. There are three cars and an old lady and her, her kid uh, in the foreground. So there's a whole bunch of ways I can do this. The way I've chosen to do it here in Photoshop is that I pen tooled around the foreground and I hit Command J to jump it up. And then I uh, bring the trolley back in, hit the, uh, the little eye tool there and uh, make the trolley visible. And then what happens is that the trolley is sandwiched in between the foreground and the background. Right now, it's not. Right now, it's on top. But I can move that layer. Uh, I can move the, the layer that I cut out. And um, 
Here, slide it down. And now it's uh, it's behind the cars and the old lady. So really that's, that's it for um, building the panel, but that takes a lot of thought. You gotta decide what's gonna move in this panel and then when you cut out the pieces, there's always huge holes. There's always huge holes and you've got to fill them up. And that's that's pretty time consuming. This took me about uh, half an hour to do. Probably could have done it a little bit faster, but um, yeah, just to, just to cut out the elements. The animation part, you know, you go over to the timeline button under view, create video timeline. I'm not gonna do frame animation. Create video timeline. This is easy, this is the easy part. Um, all your layers now become animatable. You can animate any anything that you see with a stopwatch next to it. So you go over to the layer, layer 13, that's the trolley, and you click that arrow and you open up and you see what can you animate. We're changing the position of this trolley, so we're gonna click the stopwatch next to position. And when you do that, that's gonna create the first key frame, uh, which is right above that that blue uh, current time indicator. Now you've got to slide that current time indicator somewhere and then you've got to move your object. So you move the trolley and as soon as you let go of the trolley, it's going to give you a second keyframe. I'll show you what that looks like. So you've moved the current time indicator and then you move your object or whatever you're animating and when you let go, boom, the keyframe pops up. And I mean that's basically how you make an animation in Photoshop. I'm a Photoshop guy, you know, I'm a photographer, that's my background, so I'm very comfortable in Photoshop, that's why I do my animations here. Uh, you might be wondering why I don't do it in some other software. Um, this is just what I'm comfortable uh, doing. So you've got that first keyframe and the last keyframe, and I'm gonna just export it and render the video and save it out so that we have it. Um, and then you can piece together your your uh, you know motion comic or your trailer in some editing software. I use iMovie because it's really really easy. But you know whatever whatever works for you. Now these uh, animations are are pretty simple. Like I said, you click the stopwatch and it creates a keyframe, and then you've got to change the current time indicator and then make some sort of change. So I hit opacity and I bring the opacity down to zero, and now I've got a ghost trolley uh, that will disappear after uh, a couple seconds. Um, these keyframes are cool because they are easy to slide around. You can click on them when they're yellow, and then when, when, when you click on them, they turn yellow, and then you just hit delete if you wanna get rid of them. Uh, you can cut and paste them. You can select multiple at once. Uh, they're, they're pretty fun to play with. So you can slide them around. So the animation's five minutes long. It used to, t or five seconds long. It used to take five seconds for the trolley to get from point A to point B. Now it's going the same distance in one second. Um, I can also add uh, a whole bunch more keyframes. Um, you know, I can slide this to, you know, two seconds, slide the trolley a little bit, let go, that makes a keyframe, move it a little bit more, one more second, slide the trolley a little bit, uh, go another couple, you know, another second, another few feet, and, uh, and just experiment a little bit. Um, the way the Photoshop animation works is that you can move from point A to point B at a fixed linear speed so you you can't really um, you know slow down or speed up incrementally it's just it's just point A to point B but you can also animate 3d objects which is very cool and in your video editing software you can go in and you can do Ken Burns effect or you can add more special effects you can zoom you can make a shaky camera or whatever so there's a lot of possibilities here so Thanks so much for checking this out, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this edition of uh, Photoshop Animation for Comics.